the art of the taper that's right we're tapering this week getting ready for the race and i'm just gonna kick it off gonna kick it off right now keyword taper so tonight in the studio i'll break down my overall philosophy and thesis behind the taper and even though uh this is not a traditional taper week and i'll explain why back of the studio as well all right we're getting the run in uh, and then heading into the gym for some good stretching. And yes, I'm gonna talk about in a second video today what I like to do for leg work, specifically uh, the lower legs, not the upper body. So we're gonna have a second video today. Quick run, quick shots. Time is tight today, really tight. So I had to expedite that run a little bit. Six miles, 10K, and uh, bringing the volume down this week just a little bit, and we'll talk about that later. And yes, if you're interested in learning a little bit more, not, um, not all of my lifts that I do for my lower legs, but some of the lifts that I do in the gym to work on my strength and my core work, in my stride, then come back 3 p.m. for that second video where I will go into really good detail just about my lifting for my lower legs. All right, into the gym. Leaving the gym, and I just saw a comment come through the wire. I forgot to tell you yesterday, the other YouTuber that sent shoes for the giveaway uh, tonight, when you're watching this tonight, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, you're gonna wanna come back to the channel, 7 p.m. Live, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna give away running shoes. Uh, I probably have, I probably have a dozen pairs, but I think we'll start with six of them. And uh, tonight, 7 p.m., well, it was Kofuzi. That's right, Kofuzi. You guys know Kofuzi. Uh, he sent some shoes. I'm not sure which ones, uh, but that's kind of cool. I was like, Kofuzi, if you sign these, we'll sell them on eBay and make a, make a killing. So, yeah, I don't know if he signed them. We'll find out tomorrow night. We'll find out tomorrow night. All right, heading home. Woo, got to get, actually got to get organized for that. Oh, baby. got the boxes in it is a busy day so I don't I don't even have time to open up all of them but I want to take a little bit of inventory for tonight again 7 p.m. so we're gonna open up some boxes and let's just see what we find all right come on let's see where am I gonna oh yeah these I've actually already opened these I forgot these are Pegasus 35s Pegasus 35s Asics box um, oh let me go get hold on there we go, okay, got the knife. By the way, there was a viewer who was a little concerned about me using this knife all the time. Just so you know, it's about 15 years old. Very dull, very dull. So don't worry, it's okay. It'll cut tape, but that's about it. All right, here we go. What is in this ASICS box? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's see here. Asics something don't oh there we go an Asics GT 2000 flight foam it's a big shoe it's a big shoe okay come back tonight for that oh my goodness thank you for sending that for, oh yes oh yeah from Jonathan thank you Jonathan oh my goodness all right I'm gonna open up one more one more oh yeah all right let's see I think these are brand new these are not used Sockany, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. The Kinvara 9 from Sockany. Let's see, oh my goodness. Okay, okay, that is just a little taste of what is to come so far. We've got Sockany, Skechers, Nike, who knows what else is in these boxes. Remember, there's shoes from Kofuzi, so again, 7 p.m. tonight. And all right, we're off to date night, and then we're gonna talk about the art of the taper here in a minute. So, and now I just need to find a place to store the shoes for the night. Who knows? Maybe Michael's room. All right, let's, let's figure out in there. Keys. Oh, I got keys. He's got the keys got to my heart. 
Tuesday. Hey, Fat Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Happy Fat Tuesday. A little Mardi Gras action. I think we're gonna get a margarita tonight. And, tr and true love, what yes. do you think about all these incredible running shoes showing up at our oh house? Oh my gosh. People just sending shoes, and yes, it is taking up a little bit of floor space. Yes. But that's okay. Happily. We don't mind. Someday we'll have a warehouse. Oh, what do you think about that? I think it's so beautiful and so generous, and it makes me proud to be an American. And I, I feel like, do you know what? Generosity is alive and well in America, and it just makes me grateful and happy to have such fine people watching our YouTube channel. So thank you. Thank you. And guess what? If you live outside the U.S., you can send oh, shoes too. You're probably also generous. We love you too outside we the U.S. love everybody. <laughs> and, uh, you know, folks are asking whether or not uh, we will give shoes away for outside the U.S., Absolutely. Now listen, we'll have to monitor shipping costs and all that. Yeah. But um, yes, oh, you know. Oh, that's beautiful. Throw your ring in the hat and we'll just see what we can do. We'll see what throw we can do. Throw your hat in the ring. Throw your, what did you I say? You said ring in your hat. Throw the ring in your hat Come and on. the hat in the ring. Why not? <laughs> Give me that margarita. Come on. <laughs> Give me Come that. Come on, bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Woo! All right, I better buckle up. <laughs> And I'm back from date night. All right, I know my t-shirt says farewell. Don't worry, we're not shutting the YouTube channel down. Don't you worry, this is from the Elton John farewell tour. Okay, peak races, train through races, tapering, what does it all mean? How does it fit into your overall training block and your overall race calendar? Well, we did talk about peak races, upper right hand corner, maybe, gosh, probably about two months ago now on the vlog. So I'm not gonna dive too deep into it. Go check it out if you wanna really dive into what is an actual peak race. Well, I'll just say briefly, this year, the Cleveland Marathon and the Pikes Peak Ascent, those are my two major peak races uh, for 2019 and then possibly another peak race in the fall. Uh, we're still ironing out those details at this point. Uh, but for a train through race, I have one this week. It's amazing, it's race week. It's unbelievable that the America's Uphill is finally here. Now listen, this is, a, this is an important race. I'm excited for it, but it's definitely not like, it's not at the top of my calendar. It's not, it's more frankly a fun race. Like if I'm gonna be racing against uphill skiers, you know it's gonna be like great competition. It's gonna hurt like no tomorrow. It's a, it's a vertical kilometer up a ski hill. It's gonna take 50 minutes approximately to run two and a half miles. So that gives you an idea of how hard it's gonna be. And, uh, but I am taking it seriously, but it's definitely not I'm, it's not like it's Pikes Peak Ascent Week. I'll just I'll just put it that way. Uh, so, what is tapering? And maybe you maybe you're very familiar with this topic. Maybe you're not. Tapering, just very basic definition, is the reduction of volume in your training leading up to a race. At least that's how I define it in my mind. As you're getting as you're going through your training block. Uh, getting ready for a peak race especially, you're probably gonna be running pretty high mileage. You might be hitting 30 miles a week if you're getting ready for a five, your first 5K, or maybe you're hitting 70 miles a week, getting ready for your first marathon. Who knows what your volume might be? Well, you want to make sure, and I, I, love, this, I love this saying, you wanna make sure you get to the starting line as fit as possible while being as fresh as possible, okay? So it's a two-pronged a two approach for getting to the starting line uh, ready to rock and roll because you can be ridiculously fit, but if your legs are shot to you know what, it's not gonna be good. Like you're not gonna perform at your highest ability. And on the reverse side of that, if your fitness is a little reduced, but your freshness is on top of the world, yeah, you're not gonna race as well. It's gonna hurt. You're gonna hit the wall, you know, earlier in the race than you might like. So it's walking that line. And the taper is part of that uh, art form, really, of training to make sure you get ready to rock and roll at the right moment. Okay, some details. And I think I'm gonna have to make 
probably a separate playlist and a series of videos on this topic because I just don't I don't have time tonight to dig into the nitty-gritty of tapering but I'll just give you a, an overview of let's say the last three weeks leading up to a peak race that's how I do it that's how I've always done it even really now, yeah, to a certain extent since high school, but especially in college and after college. So I like to begin tapering three weeks out from the peak race. So for Cleveland, May 19th, I will start to taper uh, early May, meaning I will begin to reduce the volume of my training by 10 to 20 percent. Okay, so if let's just say I'm running 100 miles a week to make the, to keep the math easy for me. So 100 miles a week, I will depending on how I'm feeling. Remember, make remember how I, I I write in my calendar, my physical calendar in pencil, so that I can go back and just adjust things as I'm going along, depending on how the body is reacting to the training. Uh, so 10 to 20 percent, three weeks out, uh, and then and gosh, this is a little bit detailed, but I then begin to add more. Speed speed so volume is coming down speed is going up all right with very specific workouts that we won't talk about now but really specific workouts to get that turnover going and just make sure you are sh you are laser focused and sharp as a knife uh, on race day so speed goes up volume comes down three weeks out 10 to 20 percent and then my sweet spot ha oh, my sweet spot, I believe that, so that's three weeks out. The next reduction is about 10 to 12 days out, all right? So basically 10 days later, but I, I like to keep the window like no less than 10, no more than 12 days out from the peak race. I'll come down again, 10 to 15%, not quite 20%, 10 to 15%, okay? And from that point, from that 10 day window out, that is when the legs really begin to notice like, oh, Something's happening here. I feel I'm starting to feel good. I, I don't feel great yet, but I'm starting to feel really really good Okay, so that's ten days out and then the next reduction is three to four days out again Going by feel listening to your legs, especially your whole body, but especially your legs So three to four days. So if you're racing most races are on a Saturday Although the Cleveland Marathon is on Sunday, but most races are on Saturday. So let's walk it backward Friday Thursday, Wednesday, maybe Tuesday. No later than Wednesday, no earlier than Tuesday for me. All right, where I will drop it down, way down basically, and I'll really make sure I'm freshening up. And then of course, the day before the race, a nice, good shakeout where you're getting a good warm up, a good, uh, good strides, really important to get some good strides in the night before the race just to make sure again to wake make sure the legs are not falling asleep and i do just want to give you an example and a warning some runners that i have trained with and i i won't name their names but i will say that they truly believe and i don't know if it's more mental or physical but they believe that they if they taper too much it really impacts their race day meaning they they feel like they're too much out of their rhythm of training and their legs almost fall asleep uh if it, it's hard to explain but i i've been with runner one runner in particular i'm thinking of but a couple other guys as well that they just they don't like to taper really almost at all maybe like a little bit two or three days before but they will basically keep full volume going into a race because they like to stay in their routine and again is it mental physical what is it i don't know exactly so what does that mean testing yes you're going to have to test for yourself um probably i would you know i'd recommend test on some races that are maybe not your peak races you know if you're getting ready for the new york city marathon or i don't know a big big race you don't want to be testing before a huge huge race you want to make sure you have everything ironed out and i've been racing for so long this is what i like the the the, the three weeks out the 10 to 12 days out the three to four days out and then of course the shakeout run before the race Keyword is taper. Question of the day. Have you ever... Ugh, I hate to even go here, but have you ever had a bad taper where you didn't... You don't, you don't feel like you arrived at the starting line fresh or fit 
or like explain the scenario how did it go like what you I like you just didn't quite nail the last let's say month of training the last three weeks two weeks to share your experience I bet a lot of us can learn from your experience down below in the comments I would appreciate it and that is today's VLOG as I used to say here in the Nike Vomero 14s today I will give them a seven and a half out of ten today yeah not bad, not bad. I, I think I figured out how to tie them. I'll just leave it at that. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. 7 p.m. shoe giveaway. Be here for some free shoes. Free shoes. See you tonight. See you tomorrow, but see you tonight. Woo, shoe giveaway.